everyone, welcome to Hedgehog Hollow. So today I'm super excited because I'm sharing some of the new things I've learned about watercolors and how we can use them on dark cardstock. So I have lots of tips, tricks, and techniques to share with you. So let's get started. dive right in. I'm going to be watercoloring this new stamp. It's my absolute favorite. I've used this in so many videos already. It's called Walk, Crawl or Run from Picket Fence Studios. And today I'm using some knowledge I gained over at Skillshare and the lovely people at Skillshare have sponsored this video so I can share with you some of the things that I have learned but also offer you guys a free trial to Skillshare. So you can check out the links below. All the terms, conditions, info and everything is just on that first line underneath the video. And whether you're looking to maybe learn some more crafty techniques, you want to hand letter, you want to do videos, maybe you want to change up your career or you're just looking for some entertainment while we're all at home, you can check out Skillshare and use that free trial. I can't wait to see what you create. Be sure to also tag me in what you're creating. So here, this is a set I have from Koi. Um, it's a really nice travel set you can see here. So this is how it comes open the lid. It's got this little palette that lifts straight out like this. All your colors are in here. You also have a sponge so you can dab off your water pen. It also has a water pen if you want to use that one. I just happen to have one off my craft desk right here. And so I'm going to go in, I'm going to start activating some pigments and I'm going to go with these blues. So I'm just going to let those kind of activate for a second. And the one thing I really like, this was a technique I learned in the class, was just to take some water. You don't need huge amounts. So this is just white heat embossing. So it's going to resist everything we're going to add on. And I'm going to take that same water. And I'm going to stretch it out into the other side of my converse. Now my paint is only going to go where there's water. And one thing I've really learned with this class that I took on Skillshare is less is definitely more. There's also a really great um, gouache workshop over there. So go try it out with our free trial. Um, it works out really inexpensive with the annual pass, which is what I took. And um, you can try out so many different things. Greg's tried out some video ones. Um, the girls had looked, Maddie looked at an anime and a manga one. So lots of fun things that you can learn to do. So I'm just gonna pick up some pigment in here. Um, I'm just dabbing it in, as you can see. Not, you know, huge amounts of it. But the water, the pigment is only gonna go where there's water and it's naturally going to start moving out itself. So you don't have to use huge amounts of pigments. And I'd really struggled before now with watercolor. So you see how I've just added that color in and it's very naturally kind of moved its way down. You can just see um, how it's popping in there. I'm gonna do the same so that it moves up towards the middle, but it creates that very kind of natural shine. I'm just gonna tilt this a little bit so you can see um, how that kind of comes out. So I'm gonna do the same down here. I'm just gonna add a little bit of color of one of the pigments around this edge. And if the paper is dry, that watercolor is not going to move out. And I'm going to use a wetter blue. And you can see how that spreads out far more. And it creates a kind of very natural, like open, shiny area. So that is all just done through the pigment and the brushwork. And I have a little dot going over here. Now, because I used embossing powder, that's going to resist anywhere I've put uh, watercolor. So I don't have to worry about, um, you know, filling that in either, which is really nice. I'm going to feather out just a little bit of that pigment here. And now I'm going to go, I'm going to do the dry technique. So you see here how now it's not moving at all when I'm adding this color to my laces. Um, so I'm actually just going to let, as my brush gets dry, so I'll straggly hair there, I'm going to pull that one out. I should trim that down later, I don't have any scissors to hand. So I'm just going to use the pigment I have got with a little bit of water. And you can see this isn't moving because I didn't put any water down first. And it's allowing me to put a much thicker coat down. So you can see how cool do these look. Now if you want to add more pigment in here, we can do that. And again, the other thing is if I go over the line, so if I'm painting over this white, I can just take 
a very lightly damp kitchen towel, wipe it over the embossing powder, and the only thing that's going to come up is what's on the embossing powder. It's not going to affect my painting, as long as it's really only very, very lightly damp. So you don't want it too damp, otherwise that won't work. But I just love how you can really add simple pops of colour in here. I'm just adding some water and cleaning out my brush. Now I'm going to try out just adding a little bit of extra colour in. I think I'm going to add just some of this paralyzed white. So first of all, I'm going to add some water just in a couple of these areas. So really simple. And I've just learned this. I'm also working through um, a gouache course that's over on Skillshare. Gouache is great. It's a hybrid between, or like a crossover between watercolor and acrylic. So it gives you some really fun techniques. Again, you can use it on black. Um, it's just a really fun one to work with. So go try that one out as well. So again, you see how I just add a little dot of pigment and it's going straight in. So everything I've used, I'm gonna link below. Don't forget to check out that trial as well. And I'm gonna mount this into a really quick and simple card that you can use all your practice pieces and mount them up into cards too. So I love this stamp though, it's just so easy. And I could do it in so many different color combinations. Um, you know, I could do pink and glittery for Tilly. I can do very manly. It can do fun. You could even do it as new babies and make them more into like a baby shoe. And it comes with all of these sentiments. So the sentiments will fit um, kind of curved around here. These ones fit inside the toe piece here. So, you know, loads and loads of different things that you can do. It makes it really easy. And also be careful not to re put your embossing powder. You don't want to do that either. So just do that quite gently. I'm going to grab myself out some blue cardstock. I'm going to go light blue here. I already have a card base ready to go. And I can put my little pack back together. This is just so easy. So, done. I'm going to fold my cardstock in half. And we can trim down. So the large piece I'm doing to four inches by five and a quarter. My black piece is going to go down to three and three quarters by five inches. So I'm going to take a little bit off the top here. And because I'm going to take them off both sides just to keep it nice and centered. The reason I leave it bigger is if I make a mistake, then it's really easy because I can just know that I trim that side off as my error. Let's grab ourselves out some tape. Stick it down. So you can see, really easy. And you could either keep these in like a baseball card um, folder, I've done that with sample pieces, or you can mount them up and make them into a really pretty card. So this one, you could leave blank and then add a sentence you like. I like to add lots of hello sentiments, or you could stamp in now with some embossing powder in here and make it pop with a different color. But just really fun technique, lots and lots of ways to practice. Go check those out, build up your skills, have some fun, learn something new, and use that trial below. So thank you so much for joining me. I will see you again tomorrow, another tip, trick, tutorial, or maybe something a little bit different. I'll see you then. Bye.